All right, so today's topic is going to be LinkedIn. I'm going to make notes as usual, and I'll put these notes into the network folder. If you are new this week, I'll remind us where the network folder is a little bit later. So today is the 28th. Today's topic is LinkedIn. So Yes, I will put these notes in the network folder a little bit later, and I'll tell everyone, I'll remind everyone where the network folder is a little later. And we'll print them at home? Is that what you mean? I can uh, turn on the printer later, because uh, it's noisy, during the lecture, and you'll be able to print it here if you'd like. Oh. So LinkedIn is the professional social network used for networking job hunting, and education. So in the real world, I might go to a mixer, a community event, I might go to an industry festival, etc., and I'm going to connect with people on a topic <coughs> in the real world. In the real world, I give someone my business card, I talk about what they do, what I do, how we can collaborate, etc. Well, in the digital world, LinkedIn. In the digital world, I have a way to connect with like-minded people on the topics that matter to me. So I can network if I need to have in my pocket a connection <coughs> to someone that can help me financially. I can connect with them on LinkedIn and, and have that connection. LinkedIn is also for job hunting. Let's say I need to um, you know, get a job in my industry. Again, with LinkedIn, I can search to find. I can link to find. I can search to find uh, job listings in my city, uh, outside of the location, based on keywords. I can get alerts when a position is open. And then we'll see the newer uh, aspect of LinkedIn, which is education. I want to update my skills and such. So we'll look at all of these aspects when we get into the network. It can be used for personal or professional, or that is, uh, yeah, personal or business purposes. I've already mentioned some examples of perhaps why for personal, I want to network, I want to educate myself, I'm looking for a job. Based on all that we've looked at in the previous weeks, why might we use LinkedIn as a professional purpose? To market to an audience. Right, to try to find an audience, just like the other networks. I, I would use Twitter or Facebook to try to find an audience for my product, for my brand, for my company. I have that ability as well in LinkedIn to various degrees. My business can find, can try to find customers. Remember, I always have to sort of hedge my language with these networks. I can't say guarantee or this will happen. I have to say could happen, probably will happen, etc. because of the competition, because of your effectiveness in using it and communicating. But in theory, all of these networks could find you an audience to market to an audience to promote your business. And to hire. Well, on the opposite of you looking for a job, LinkedIn can be used to hire to hire talent for your business. We have uh, LinkedIn Basic and LinkedIn Premium. What's premium a code word for? Cost money. Cost money, not free. So the basic one, many features, many useful features. Premium, many more useful features. I don't know what the price is at the moment. We'll look at it in a bit. But like almost everything else that we've done in this class, 
it's always been about the free aspects of it all. Most of us are on a budget, we have to spend our capital on various things, and so social media might not rank as much to spend on. But as I've talked before about the importance of spending in social media marketing, it might benefit you to invest in some of these networks uh, for the various features. <clears throat> so, as an example, let me show one. Uh, you've probably already seen these, but let me show you an example. You can go to your web browser. Uh, you can open any of the web browsers down there, Firefox, etc. You can go to the address linkedin.com slash in slash Victor Campos. That's my LinkedIn. So the default, a lot like Facebook, when you create a brand new LinkedIn account, you get a gibberish address. You get linkedin.com slash user slash Victor dash Campos dash one two five eight nine. You get some weird name, some name that doesn't roll off the tongue or fit on your business card. We can change it, and I'll show you how, because it's kind of hidden to change your LinkedIn account so that you have your real name or whatever name you want to portray, but some short, memorable name. So I can say default address. Something like LinkedIn.com slash user slash John Smith dash something. Um, as soon as possible, set up the short name. And I'll show you how, since it is a bit hidden. So I would want that on LinkedIn. And I see this a lot for a lot of businesses. Uh, for every network, especially Facebook and LinkedIn. They never change their name and then they use it on a business card or they use it on a tweet and such or a post on Facebook and it doesn't look professional. It doesn't look like you know what you're doing. This here, this is just a quick address that LinkedIn gives you. Facebook does the same. You need to take the effort and the care to show that you're professional and that you're, you've gone in and chosen your, your name. Now, there might be more than one John Smith on LinkedIn, so I have to settle for John Smith 2 or John Smith Jr. or John M. Smith or something. The same problem with every other network. The name might have been taken. Uh, I believe LinkedIn has been around since like 2003, so it's been around a while. And therefore, if you've had LinkedIn for a while but you never claimed your short name, probably is gone because you might not be the only John Smith on the network. In the example here then, this is my, my LinkedIn, uh, the address, I claim the name, um, and this is a standard LinkedIn uh, personal account, <clears throat> a picture, etc. One thing that I'll say right away, if you notice on my account for personal, LinkedIn, just gonna write Lin LinkedIn accounts set up the profile as soon as possible. Now let me say it, let's set up the biography. Like every other network I've set. On Twitter, you want to fill in, put your graphics, put your text, put your biography, location, etc. On Facebook, you want to fill in all that about information as soon as possible. Same thing with LinkedIn. If you're gonna use LinkedIn, especially with a personal one, you want to fill that in as much as possible and remember that this will be public. <laughs> like a good photo of yourself. This is the one definitely that if you're going to use Facebook for personal, people want to see who it is they are actually dealing with. Not that funny picture of your cat or not that artistic photo of the London Bridge that you took or not that inspirational sunset picture. You want to use your picture, your real picture on LinkedIn because this is the purpose of LinkedIn, real people connecting with real people. It's okay if you've got a different sort of photo on the other networks, I guess. But again, if you are the face of your business, you want to use your face on LinkedIn. 
good photo is defined as good lighting, upper body shot, smile. Um, I guess that's not really a smile, but I, I was trying. <laughs> Uh, and uh, it's focused on, on my face, so anything you know above chest line up, that's a good amount of space right there for the, the photo. That is going to be better than a group shot of everyone all together. Everyone all together in the business. It's going to be the individual person, so that's a photo your name, your title, we'll talk about all of that stuff, your connections and, and so forth, education. And it's going to be like a digital resume. You're going to have a summary of yourself, your experience, job experience, education projects. I'll show you how to set all of this up in a little bit. Yes? Can we not put something? Can we not put Yeah, you, you can, uh, as much as, as however you want to run this, and as little or as much as you want to put is fine. You just have to think about what what purpose, what you're trying to get out of it. But it doesn't make you fill in yourself. No, it highly suggests you do, but you can ignore the suggestion. And so, you can, uh, fill in as much as you want, but recommendation, fill in as much as you can. Uh, to take advantage of setting up connections. When I put in my high school, let's say, it might then, uh, the algorithm, the formula inside of LinkedIn might realize, okay, you're, you put San Diego and you put that high school, here's other people that lived in San Diego at that time, went to that high school, you may want to connect with them. You worked at this business for this amount of time in this city. Well, here's other people that work in that business at the same amount of time. You may want to connect with them. They might be valuable to you. One thing that I'll say here also is use LinkedIn self selfishly, not <laughs> selflessly, selfishly. What I mean by that is what's in it for you? Why would you connect with someone? Why would you follow someone or business? You might get uh, notifications. John Smith wants to connect with you on LinkedIn. Don't simply accept everyone. Think about it, yes, selfishly. What's in it for you? I want to connect with people on LinkedIn that will be valuable to me. As I said, if I am a realtor, I want to connect maybe with other realty professionals or customers or whatever. Why would I connect with someone that has nothing to do with real estate or is not going to be a customer? You can definitely be more selective in this network than the other ones. The other networks are a lot about get as many followers as you can because of the numbers, the averages about eventually all of those connections will pay off. LinkedIn, you can and should be more selective in that your connections, everyone should matter. I've got here 101 connections so far. I know people that have 500. Is it really that valuable for you to have 500 connections that you never communicate with, that you never read their content, that you never get anything out of? It's not a popularity contest like Facebook and all of that. It is, how am I going to use this? This is my digital resume. I have these connections with people for a reason, for a purpose. So people, what's that in the right? People also view? Yeah, the connections. People are going to view one account, and LinkedIn is going to suggest to to them, how, why not also look at this account? They might be related somehow. In my case, it's saying when people looked at my account here, they also then looked at these other accounts, which often means I was connected to them and people said, okay, who's this other connection that they have? Oh, not all of them. Not those people on the right. 
No, I do know some of them. It's just that LinkedIn is saying it might be valuable if you're trying to connect with Victor Campos, it might be valuable to also connect with Jeff Risty. Hello. Yes. Yes. This is one of the few networks that will tattletale and will tell you who looked at your account. So on the other networks, we could use a little reconnaissance and see who is look or who is connected and all of that with my competitors. But LinkedIn does tell you who has looked at your account, so it'll tell you the competition down the street was looking at your account. How much that was available? To some degree, the basic one gives you some of that, but the premium one, of course, will give you even more of the details. They might have changed it because I know that they used to give some basic information uh, and so they might have changed it now that you definitely have to pay to get that information. Oh, oh it says, or turn off private mode to see your most recent viewers. You're in private mode, so it wouldn't show you that. So default. Not Do you private. Have a personal? Okay, professional? Yes. That's what we're looking at. Professional. We're going to look at, at both of them. Oh. So default, uh, not private account. Information is public. You can see who visited your account. Premium shows more. Like most networks, they, you can activate some measure of privacy. You can turn your account completely private. This again, think about it. Uh, is it going to be valuable to have your account private or public? Facebook, I could see that your account, you put it private. You don't want any, any crazy person looking at your stuff on Facebook. Usually what you put on Facebook is very, very personal. The purpose of this LinkedIn for most of us will be to be public, to, to, to find an audience, to find connections. So I personally recommend and don't think you should have your account on LinkedIn private. If you use, if you accept the connections judiciously, don't just click yes to everyone that wants to connect with you. If you check those requests properly, you don't have to be private. The, the purpose of this, again, is to have a public forum to reach an audience. Uh, if I were to go to an industry event, is it going to be more valuable in that industry event for me to sit in the corner by myself or to walk around and talk to the people to make connections? LinkedIn is the same way. Sitting in the corner with your account set to private or leaving it public to try to build these connections. So... Can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. Private? Um, if I'm dealing with a recruiter, can I share it with her? but not have it open to the world? I believe the only way you can sort of um, approve who can see it is if you are connected. So if you two have connected on LinkedIn, you will be able to see each other's content. Uh, however, if you're not connected, if there was no approval of connection, you can, I don't believe you can do that. You can't target who can see your account. It's either all public or all private. Now, there's a, I put like almost everything of what my account is completely public. That, that's fine. Here's my education, where I've worked. Uh, here's articles that I've written and such. My summary. Al almost everything is public. Although LinkedIn still says, you know, view the full profile. It's free. You click here, log in. So you have to decide the purpose of your personal or professional LinkedIn. Again, what's it for? What are you trying to do? And that'll be something that you need to answer. Question? Uh, the first page of uh, is going to be the same for everyone? Yeah, the design is not very unique. Everyone has this sort of plain gray and white. Um, you have to put your eye, icon and such, but, but not a lot of design. The, again, everyone's going to have something like this because. Well, their, their logo is round, that's why it looks like a circle. 
but these are the icons of a particular business. But all of the design. My profile picture? What about it? Your profile picture is in a circle because you made it that way somehow. Mine is uh, square. There is a basic option to turn on square or circle picture, but it's it's uh, not that important which style it is, and there's not a lot of design choices you can make. So let me show another aspect. Where where is it at? Uh, okay, here's another one. If you're looking at my account, and at the very top, where it says jobs, current jobs, if you click on our company, PMB Interactive, that will then show you a business page on LinkedIn. So go to the top there and click on PMD Interactive. That'll give you an address, linkedin.com slash company, and the name of the company. Now this stuff after the question mark, you can ignore that for the moment. But that's an address for a company on LinkedIn. That's the, the format. A person is going to have linkedin.com slash in and the name. A company is going to have linkedin.com slash company slash the name of the company with, uh, with dashes. If your name has, has spaces, it'll put dashes for you. And so this is uh, then the, the business listing. We can create both. We will, I'll show you how to uh, set up the personal and, and the business one. And you convert it as an individual to a business? Mm -hmm. I think that one's a little bit harder. It's because the personal one has so many boxes to fill in and such that do not really translate over to the business one. So I'm not sure if you can really convert it, uh, but you can probably, when we create the business one, you can probably just copy and paste some of the things from the personal one into the business one. So in campus. So that's what, that's for personal account. No, that should happen automatically uh, if it's set up the right way, which, which we'll see how. Account, business listing, personal. If you look at the business one, there is not a whole lot of a lot of content and such. It's pretty no nonsense. It's not the same as the personal one, which gives you the ability to put you know job history and and write articles and such. The business one, uh, at least the free one, doesn't give you a lot to work with. The premium, that's again, uh, you pay a little bit more, you get more features. This is just really talking about the number of employees, what the business is about, specialties, contact information, but this may be enough. If you have the information about your business and then all of this contact information, this might be enough for you to get those calls, to get those leads, to get clicks to your website, to get, to get those jobs. How many of you then have a personal or business LinkedIn account? Raise your hand. Uh, less than half the class. Okay. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll take a moment to um, to set up the account. Either you're going to sign in. A question? I have a question. I'm locked out of mine because I have no longer have the email address mm -hmm. that I had before. That might be a little difficult to get back into. All of these accounts are tied to an email address, and if we don't have access to that other email, gets a lot harder to get back into the account. We may see during the break, or you may look through the help. Down here at the bottom, there will be a help center. There may be a way to try to retrieve it other ways, if you can prove who you are. I tried to do this morning. They wanted me to upload my driver's license and a picture of an stuff. If that LinkedIn account still has value, I would jump through those hoops, because that's, you know, that's an important piece of your internet persona. And it might be important for you to get to get it back. If not, you can create a new account, but 
whatever was set up on the old account connections and such, you, you would lose them because it's a new account. So I'm going to click back on the LinkedIn link at the top left. It'll take you to the home page where you can either sign in or sign up. This will be the same as we've talked in previous classes that uh, these are public computers. Uh, when they get turned off, it will erase everything that you've done so your information is safe. You can do this at home or you can do it here while I do it. You could, I suppose, create a fake account, although on LinkedIn I do find that creating the temporary account is not that useful. It really locks it down to want you to verify it and all of that. So I would say here, um, sign in or, or create an account first name, last name, etc. Or not, you can just follow along for the moment. I will sign in with with an existing account of mine and if you're having trouble, call me over. Let's sign in or sign up. Sign in and sign up in the same box. Sign up are those boxes at the bottom where you have to fill in your last name, first name, email, password, etc. And then sign in are just the two boxes at the top. Now, as I said, uh, use LinkedIn selfishly. So I get requests all the time for people to connect with me. Don't take it bad if I don't accept. Again, I, I, I need to see, okay, you're trying to connect with me, but you're not in my industry. What is the value of me connecting with you? I don't accept connections here like I would other networks simply to raise my numbers of connections. I want the number of connections that is valuable to me. And it doesn't quite really matter in this class, but over at Southwestern College where I also teach, there, you know, students are trying to connect with me all the time, and there I definitely don't connect, especially if my if the student is in my class that semester. That's a conflict of interest. Hey, we're friends on LinkedIn. Why did you give me that B on that assignment? So I don't connect with people, students especially on LinkedIn during the semester. As for us here, well, there's no grades and all of that. But again, I would be prone to accepting a connection with people if it was valuable to me. So don't take it bad if I don't approve the connection. Anyone having any trouble signing in or signing up? I found, I found the email and I'm trying to type in the password in your Oh, that's good, yeah. That you can retrieve the old one, so try a new password and it should give you access back into it. One little sidetrack before we get back into LinkedIn. Remember um, Social Media Examiner, socialmediaexaminer.com. How many of you have been checking up on this site since I mentioned it a few weeks ago? Okay, 10 plus 10 bonus points for you, minus 10 for everyone else. <laughs> you want to check this website on a regular basis, socialmediaexaminer.com and others that are related to keep up to date with the social media jungle. This stuff changes, there's new features, there's new networks. This, uh, this site is full of tips and tricks and advice, and it's free. So socialmediaexaminer.com, and I would search, remember you can search for categories, search LinkedIn, and you'll get plenty of articles on using LinkedIn effectively. How to engage prospects in LinkedIn, a five-step plan for better leads. LinkedIn changes, what marketers need to know. And notice the, the dates. There might be a, an article that sounds really nice, but it's from 2013. In internet time, that's ancient. Don't even look at it. 
this stuff changes so fast that you know you want to look at articles that are less than a year old. These networks change. New features, the interface changes. If you're looking at an article from three years ago, it says, click on this button to do this thing. Well, that button was changed. They moved it to the left, or they took it away. June 1st, January 2nd, these are recent. These are probably relevant. I would look at those if you have the time. So LinkedIn changed some things at the beginning of the year. The home page interface changed. There's a new me sort of drop down which consolidates things. Again, look at these on your own. Check this site on a regular basis. Four LinkedIn mini case studies. I love these because these are examples of how people are doing it right. How are they using these networks, a case study on them, and how I can apply that to my own business or purposes. Yes? So I just signed in and asked me if I was a robot. That's pretty common nowadays. So go ahead and select those pictures so that it confirms mm -hmm. that you're not a mm -hmm. you're not a spam mm -hmm. bot. Are you gonna teach us how to do posts? In LinkedIn? Yeah. So after you get into LinkedIn, we'll just take a quick overview, as we usually do, the anatomy of the network, what the different screens look like and such, uh, and then various useful settings, and then a little bit more tangible things to do. As soon as I've signed in, it took me to my home screen, wherever you're at. You can always go back to the home screen to get an overview of a variety of things, like here it is, tattletailing, 36 people viewed my profile you know, most of you at the moment. 39 viewed my posts, so we'll talk about posts as well. LinkedIn is becoming more and more uh, of a player in the, in, the, uh, in the blog posting category. You can write blog posts in WordPress, in Blogger, etc., but LinkedIn and Facebook now are giving us a platform to write blog posts. We can have a blog for free on LinkedIn. Uh, that's creating an article and such. We'll look at it later. 39 views on my posts recently. There's the main timeline right here, all of this content on those that I follow or topics that I follow, so it's keeping me up to date on various industry news and such. So all uh, that in the middle is just kind of stuff that we may or may not want to read? In a sense, yes. But the reason it recommends why you may like it is one of my connections liked this. I connected with Romeo, and we have uh, goals that we share. We're both in web design, let's say. Mm -hmm. So if he liked or read a particular item, LinkedIn says you might like this as well. So the al LinkedIn algorithm is suggesting content. The good and bad about that is it's bad because, well, I didn't really care about that. Why are you showing it to me? Uh -huh. The good about it is I may discover something that may be meaningful or useful to me for the business. And I have the option on most of these to click to say, hide this. I don't want to see this anymore. I wouldn't go right away to start hiding this just yet. I do think there is a value to see what it's showing me because it may have a value for my business. And how do you tell the ad, difference between an ad and ads? Uh, I think the ads are mostly going to be marked as promoted because they've paid uh -huh. to, to show it. So these, and it's small, it's not even that visible. Like others, the word promoted is more obvious. But usually most of these are going to say promoted if someone paid. So escape the nine levels of marketing, productivity, heck, get the ebook now. I may or may not want that. Someone paid for me to see that. Most of these have the button up here, hide this. And this is an ad. So this home page uh, is just to keep up to date with the latest from your connections, uh, mostly what they've liked and all of that, and for you to share something, to post something, which we'll look at in deeper later. The next icon at the top is my network. So these are my connections, who am I connected with, 
um, like most of the networks, it's going to say uh, if you want to reach more people, especially those that you know, connect your address book. It'll ask you to connect your Gmail or your Hotmail or whatever. This is optional. And again, as I've said previously, I personally don't really recommend and find that much value in connecting with your friends and family on these networks if you're doing it for business. I'm not going to sell my products to my friends and family over and over. I'm not going to build my business on the backs of my friends and family. So I usually personally don't do this. Although the other people in my company, they, they have the opposite view, saying any connection is a good connection because of the possible further connections. Meaning, again, Romeo like this, so I saw something new. And that may have a value when I connect with Aunt Gertrude and she <coughs> shares something. I may see something that is valuable to me. Maybe. So there's no right or wrong answer, but I personally don't have put much stock in doing the connections to friends and family. I see a bunch of invitations. Again, people are going to want to connect with me all the time. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look at their quick blurb right here, and then if from this I'm intrigued, I could click see more or click their profile to view their home profile, which they will get alerted that says Victor Campos looked at your profile. So I make my decision, which you may think it's too much of a snap decision, but I make my decision to connect based on what is written here. What is their name? Uh, what is their job title? And anything else that tells me here. This says, we haven't met. But there, we share a connection. I've connected with Edgar, and Edgar has connected with Andres. So now Andres is trying to connect with me. I can decide if that's enough of an incentive to click accept or ignore. How does the software know if you guys met? It knows we met because we choose to meet we have chosen to meet. Like I said, I am directly connected with Edgar. Uh, but Matt and the wife at the top, uh -huh. it thinks that you guys, you guys have met before? Um, maybe not in person, but through the algorithm of it figuring out you're connected with this person, and you've done these things on LinkedIn, you may want to connect with this person because you share some interests or hobbies or education. Well, so I guess the question is how so if you get these in, lots of invitations, some say we have met we like have you met Matt in the first one? I don't believe so, no. And then it's still but it doesn't say we haven't met on those two. Mm -hmm. So I'm just trying to figure out in the future. Some of this you we can't exactly figure out. Some of this is LinkedIn's uh, trade secrets. Uh, algorithm trying to make connections with people. Uh, so it thinks uh, we might benefit from connections, but this is also perhaps Matt used the search box to search for San Diego web designers, and my name came up. And he then says, Let me connect with every San Diego web designer. And clicked, click connect. So now I have to decide to accept it or ignore it. So it's not just LinkedIn kind of randomly connecting people. It is people also being active and using the LinkedIn search tools and such to try to find people. That makes sense. Thank you. So again, I see more of this you may know. This is more of the examples. Uh, well, Giselle is also part of the Southwestern Community College District. I'm part of it as well. We may want to connect. LinkedIn thinks. I have this connection. Han Su is connected with Norma, etc. I may want to connect. So it's just going to constantly offer me connections, which some make sense, some don't. But again, use it uh, selfishly. What's the what's the purpose or what's the uh, end result positively for me with connecting with people? So. Another tip, this one, uh, most uh, blogs will tell you this, and I would also subscribe to this. I don't connect with people that don't have a profile picture. It's not hard to set up a profile picture, and it shows me you don't really care, or you don't know what you're doing. Take a little time to set up your account, and we're still getting to that. 
set up your account, put your picture, show, put your best foot forward, write your information in. All that this says is student at Grossmont College and the person's name, but no picture, nothing else to make a decision to connect. <clears throat> Up on jobs, this is that screen and this is a bigger topic for a little bit later, a little a discussion for a little bit later. If I'm looking for a job, LinkedIn's job searching feature is here. There's a lot to cover. We'll cover it a little later. Just keep in mind this is the screen. Could you go back to my now? Why on the right? What is that? Why is your picture there on the same ad? One easy reason. It's an ad. Oh, yeah, but your picture's by an ad. Yeah. LinkedIn somewhere in the uh, somewhere in the terms of service that we all agree to but never read, LinkedIn in there has somewhere saying we have the right to use your image in a variety of, of, of oh. features such as ads. Now this is a personalized ad. This is an ad that is targeting me and they think well if I see my own picture here I think I'm, I want to click on it and so forth. And it does work to some degree but there is that about uh, LinkedIn does have the right, we've agreed to it, to use some of our content like this for some of these purposes. Now, uh, over on the job screen, you can look at that a little late. We'll look at that a little later, but these are possible jobs. Come back to that. Messaging, I uh, don't want to really show that, but messaging, then are the private messages you can do with with people or uh, connect with people to individually uh, that stuff is not public everything else you're doing on LinkedIn but in the messages that would be uh, private connecting with people connecting with customers with leads etc so you've got another inbox to look at in the messaging screen notifications just like every other network you've got a screen where you keep up to date with all of the updates of your network and such um, it may show me uh, news articles in general based on various connections that I have and other uh, searches that I've made maybe I'm going in and searching on various topics LinkedIn is gathering this information and then uh, helping me show something. Again, like we've said with every other network, on one aspect, these networks are so intrusive. They're collecting so much information about us. On the other hand, that's good for us as a business because that means as a business, I can find the people that are interested in these things that they're searching for. For me, it's like it knows too much about me. But for my business, great. I love knowing so much about everyone else. Yes. So it's like a double edged sword, but for business, it has that value. It's going to keep up to date. It's going to keep up to date with the connections, uh, people's birthdays, and all of that stuff. And what are they up to? What are they writing? And then there's the Me tab. Here um, on Me. We'll look at profile in a moment, a variety of settings, help. And then here, notice, a lot like Facebook. You probably don't have this yet, but we'll set this up soon. On Facebook, we have the way to change between uh, a personal and a business account. On LinkedIn, we also have that. I've got this personal, and I can manage these businesses. So I can manage multiple business listings. We'll see how to set those up in a little bit. And then work. This is a new link. They're consolidating these variety of topics regarding work and jobs. There's business services. Again, most of the good ones are going to be paid if you go into the premium tier. Uh, find and attract talent. So get, uh, get uh, employees, sales opportunities. Here's the create a company page. That's how I have created these companies. We'll look at this a little later, but all of these companies that I manage here, we've got it under work, create a company page. We'll come back to it. 
And then there's other LinkedIn products. Again, I said about education. I want to brush up on my skills. I want to learn some HTML coding to be a better prospect for one of these jobs. We have this stuff. Salary, discover your earning potential, look up connections, etc. So we'll look at these a little later. And then the premium. Let me see if I can have it show me what the prices are before... Okay, this is different. Now it shows what's your goal. Am I trying to get hired? Am I a business? Am I in sales? Am I hiring? Let's say what's under business. Looks great, looks great. How much it costs? After your free month, pay as little as $47.99 per month. Build annually. $575 per year to use the premium LinkedIn for business. It is a good amount of money, but if it helps you make those sales, it might not be as much. Maybe the upfront costs, the upfront costs are a little high, but you may recuperate that. It is one of the higher ones. Remember when we looked at Facebook, we could spend as little as a dollar in our promotions, and Twitter and all of that are very similar. But this one, really, it's a very high barrier to entry, but it could uh, get great results. Go back to LinkedIn. Let's look at one thing, then we'll take a break. If you click on me, click on view profile. So I have my profile <coughs> set up. I have uh, I have this graphic here, which I didn't see it on the previous screens, but I guess it's there somewhere. There is some amount of basic styling that we can do. I put in that picture there of computer hardware. Got my picture there. And then apparently now, because every network is becoming like every other network, now you can put cool filters on your LinkedIn. I have no idea why this, is, this has any value in LinkedIn. This is not Snapchat. This is not Twitter. Why do I need to put a fun filter on my professional uh, photo? Next up, LinkedIn cat ears, just like Snapchat. Although recently, LinkedIn introduced their own emoji, just like <laughs> Facebook and all of that. You can have like, a, I think it's like a little professional bunny that you can put stickers on your, on your messages between you and your employees. So every network is copying every network. So uh, this profile of mine is set up, but this is the screen here where you would um, start to set some of this up. We'll take a break and then we'll explore this a little bit more. Um, but you can look at it a little bit during the break. Uh, most of these sections can be edited by clicking a pencil next to the area. And then we have all of these other things that can be clicked, like adding sections, um, <clears throat> setting it up in another language. So if you need to connect with a multilingual audience, you can set up your profile in different languages. So it's 10:25. Uh, Let's take a break until 10:35, and then we'll go on. Thank <laughs> you.